Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome to welcome to T and T Thursdays. Um, we've been talking about stamp and write markers and the different ways that you can, the different techniques that you can use to um, add them to your projects. So today I'm going to show you what is probably my favorite uh, technique. You see here uh, just several items that I've colored. Uh, I really like how this looks. I have this so that you can see, let me move this stuff aside, what it looks like when you do it on watercolor paper as opposed to the regular cardstock. And honestly, I like both. You know, one is going to give you more of a textured look. Uh, so you can, in this case, you can use uh, either type of paper. Zoom out here before I forget, like I tend to do. And I've chosen this flower again to work with from the Secret Garden. So it seems that I've forgotten to get one thing, and that's my little palette. So let me find that real quick. Okay. So there's my little acrylic uh, piece of, um, I don't know what to call it. It's from packaging, and this is what I use for my palette. So you can use, as I've mentioned in the first uh, video in this series, you can use your your acrylic block or the packaging from your stamps or in this case I cut out I'm sorry, acetate, I'm always calling that acrylic, it's acetate and it came from a Cricut uh, box so you, I've laid down my color and I'm using uh, a color that I hardly ever use and I thought I'd just uh, play with it today it's Elegant Eggplant, and it's a really pretty marker. I don't know why I don't use that color a lot. So this is a good opportunity for me to get to uh, get to know this color better. So I'm just going to use my, uh, my blender pen here to pick up the color. And what I like to do is I look for the areas that I'm going to that would be darker in my project. So, and then I color out. So I'm gonna go here. I think I'll go here. Cause I would want to see, so you see how really dark that is. And actually if I was concerned that it wouldn't get light enough for me, I can just rub it off a little on my paper and then color that out. Just like that. And that's still a little darker than I'd like. And I'm just going to come in here, pick up some more of that. So you can see here, I already have one, two, three different shades just from this one marker and the blender pen. And I'm going to show you on another project where I actually uh, laid the pen down first and then went in with the aqua, I'm sorry, <laughs> with the blender pen. Um, I have to say I prefer to do it this way and I'll show you why in a moment. Let me see, I think under here we'd, we would have some shadowing. And I'm just going to take some of that off because I want it, I want to start off light. I can always add color but if I go in too dark like there actually went too light, but that's okay, right? Because I can add color. If I go in too dark, then I, there's nothing, there's nowhere to go. And with all the different techniques, I try to the best of my ability to keep a light touch. Also, that's going to help you not lay down quite so much color at once. It, and it just take, it takes practice. Um, I am no expert at this by any stretch of the imagination. It's something that, you know, I do sometimes, but I don't do a lot. And I've actually been enjoying uh, doing this series. And I hope you have too. 
but I've been enjoying it because it has forced me to start using my stamp and write markers more and in all the different ways and so I'm not going to color this all in on the video I just wanted to show show you how it looks when you um, use this technique like uh, let's see I might do one more I think here oh yeah I like that and I like how this one came out because it was just the right shade that I wanted to start with and then I can always go back like I said and add another layer of color and make it a little darker like right here so you know sometimes it comes out just the way I want it and sometimes I just have to play with it and that's the thing with the the blender pens and the aqua painter that I spoke of in my last video is that you know you can blend that color out you have a little more freedom of getting more color off with the aqua painter because you can actually pick that up with a paper towel and then do your blending um, you have some a little play here but like here you see the first one that I did um, that's still darker than I'd want and I don't really think I can do a lot with that and it's so, um the things that I want to point out about using the cardstock is you don't want to mess with it too much when you're using the blender pen because eventually it will start to peel. So you do have some time and you can see it looks really nice, I think, you know, on the cardstock. And it also looks nice on here on the watercolor paper. But with the watercolor paper, you are going to have. Uh, more play time so if you just want to you need to blend some more you know it's not going to bother the water color paper whereas with your regular cardstock like I said it'll just start to peel up and so I'm just going to show you here a few projects that I've um, done using that technique and I'm going to show you this one first so you see this flower here is really dark and this is where I laid down the marker first and then I went in with my blender pen and I didn't like that. Um, I prefer, like if you look at this flower, I've got some darkness here and then it, there's little light spots. And I do purposely leave white spots, um, you know, in my coloring randomly because that adds a little bit more dimension as well. And then, um, you know, you should be able to see that there's a couple to two, you know, two to three different shades here. And mainly what I did with this is um, I used the artist shading you know first so wherever they put where they thought the dark would be um, that's where I wanted my dark areas to be and then this is done on watercolor paper um, and as you can see there's you know there's some texture in there and that's okay and then this one I kept this one really simple and I'm actually going to post this one onto my web page um, in a day or so I don't know if it'll go up today but it will um, it will be posted there. On this one, I just, you know, I did use my palette and just played around with my uh, blender pen. And you can see the shading here. And they're not all the same. And they wouldn't all be the same in nature. So it doesn't bother me that this flower is actually darker. Then I just inked the edges on this card and uh, popped it up on Whisper White cardstock. So there are those. So to recap, when you do the direct to paper technique you um, you want to start with light colors your and then you can always um, you can always add color so start off light and then if you recall we actually used the same color just to build um, on our colors like here these are direct to, pa uh, to paper using really light colors and then we just use the same marker to go over the area again to get our shading hopefully you can see that and then with with our aqua painter um, I showed you the, these two projects this one I added the marker directly to the watercolor paper and then I took the aqua painter over and I just blended those in and then with this one 
I used my palette again. I find that I um, I like using my palette more so than adding the marker direct because then I can use any of the colors in the whole collection no matter how dark they are and apply them lightly and then build onto them. So that works for me and this again is on watercolor paper. So I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, if there's anything, I'm sure I've forgotten something, some tip, or I always forget things. So if you have, um, you know, a specific question about any of the uh, techniques that I've discussed, or maybe there's one that I have forgotten to share, um, or maybe you have a really good uh, tip and technique for using stamp and write markers. I would love to hear from you. So again, I, I thank you so much for joining me on this journey and I look forward to being with you again. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you wanna play, make it about a play. It'll take creation, imagination Try to draw outside the